That's nice. Darn, I wanted to get my new sales worth in before we started. But um, of course, there's like 2,450 people in the system when parole or probation. 25% female, 75% male. Um, of course, they like pouting that they can do the the bracelets and parole cheaper than a $35,000 a year prisoner. And they always have a success story or two as part of it. Um, elected new officers because we, Jerry Parker, retired and what group was this group? Judicial, judicial, aid. judicial aid. And then went over the weighted vote in the populations per county. The like you know, Des Moines County has four votes where those small counties like Van Buren, Monroe, and Davis, Keokuk and us are only one vote. But that's how that's been done and only been a weighted vote's only been called once in the like 25 years of its existence. Then I, at 12.30, then I went to Russ. Um, with the, trying to get more work out of the pumper truck. So they're doing radio ads on the KLJB. They're not pleasant. So the, and then ads will cost $1,200 for 80 spots at $16 a minute. Um, of course, just discuss budgets and raises, then dues will go, because of raises, dues will go up $900 more a month or a year. Then from there, I went to Southeast Iowa Link for mental health. Time I was done with that, they should have just committed me. But um, <clears throat> of course, they're already on Senate file one and seven, worried about them. And they're always lobbying for a lot of things. Um, nothing really new there. So that's about all I have. On that ad, so they're trying to get the truck. Busy, get it busier. Yes, uh, it's it's making money, but they don't see it make a little more money. So that's all of that. And Russ also went through audit. Nothing was found. I'll put it here in the library later today. Okay, on I'll look for some payroll changes. Public input. Do you want to? Yeah, we've got. Yeah, sorry, here. Jimmy, the Wise County Ambulance EMS Director. I would just like to ask that we get the continue the discussion for the EMS Essential Service Tax, the Advisory Committee for the EMS. If we can get that back onto the agenda, try and keep that all rolling. Okay. Um, well, we just finally went through the public hearing process to get that on the uh, election here this fall. Uh, we want to do a lot of public information on that, I think. Well, yes, I think it's the advisory. It's the, the, advisory, the advisory committee. Well, we got to get that appointed to get the public. Informed. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. So I'd like to get that back into the agenda so we can continue that discussion. And okay. they're the ones that tell you what goes on the ballot as far as how to tax. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and we've, it's been a while, a couple of weeks since we looked at it, but we kind of had the amount of number of people we was going to put on it. And mm -hmm. we need to keep the ball rolling there. Thank yes, you. we need to keep that ball rolling. There's some payroll changes. And that's all. That's all I have. Well, thank you. All right. I'm gonna roll. Thanks, well, guys. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
Here's number twelve. I see you got Katie on your GRB back or mm -hmm. We can do that one. There's some more payrolls. Okay. Do you, you want to for Cedar Crest liquor license? Do we or Class C alcohol license? Do, we don't need a motion vote. Yeah. Yes, for both. For, yeah, both of them. I got to find out. I thought there was two of them on there. Yeah. Well, I'm still going through all my goodies to find it. Difference between a class C and a class F liquor license. Because mm -hmm. Cedar Crest is asking for a class C, and on the agenda it says class F. Usually it's class C that, that we always, it might be a typo. Typo? Typo. typo. I would say it's a typo. Yeah, it's usually a class C is what they use. Yeah. Did you find the Harry Jokes one? No, I have not. The Harry Oaks has the spot for like receptions and all that, so it might be different. I'm different not sure. pattern. Like, I cannot find the Harry jokes. Well, we could do 17 real quick if you want, because that's in front of me. And then we can hold off on 15 until we get to that point. Go ahead. You want to do that? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the liquor license for Cedar Crest golf course pending DRAM status. And I'll second that. Okay, you got a motion and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 I already saw these. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. Payroll. Yeah. Cross that. Did you?
Okay. Boys, can I ambulance? And I don't have nothing on the holidays, neither. Well, I wondered about that one. So I did bring a copy of that. Yeah, I'll make copies for each okay. of you. Did uh, you have that ambulance, Sean? You got I just handed him to show it. Have you seen it yet? No, I have not. They're in the red a long ways. <laughs> now I don't need a little bit. I'm going to walk. Something has to be done. Because they're probably going to come to the supervisors and ask for a bunch more money. And I've already smelled that in the room. Mm -hmm. Much more money you keep pouring into that before you make a change. Just ask any questions. No, like, so yeah, thank you, part. Before you ask. Thank you. Just throwing money at something doesn't always fix the problem. Never fix it. You've got you've got to get in and figure out what's going on and and right the ship. And we need to let Washington DC know that. I'm in charge of that part, so I never am. Let's go my pay grade in both of the schools. Sounds like no, no, you're right. You're the man. Oh, Christmas. We've only so many hours in the day, too, Bill. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Mm Now, the agreement that the supervisors had with the Wise Ambulance was. They were going to pay back that amount of money. Yeah. After mm -hmm. you. What happens when the supervisor, if and when the supervisors take over the ambulance? What happens? Money still has to be paid back. You think they will? I mean, at that point, when you buy a business, don't you buy the business and all their debts? Yeah, but. Um... Yeah. I just want to keep kicking the can down the road to the point where it this is like the county and it's not a business transition. They still owe the money to back to the county coffers. So there's taxpayers' money put in here. So yes, they still owe it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a very much. That's one hundred sixty thousand dollars we got right now. You got that for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we need that. Pass it all down. And that's after, right? I don't know if that is before or after you, you put in 100 more. Well, they only used 75 as of last month, wasn't it? 75. And they still had 75. And uh, why am I thinking that? I don't know. I don't know. I Well, I've asked them to reach out to um, Cindy and other people that do billing, and that hasn't happened yet. 
and right. uh, I'm disappointed in that so, uh, yeah. because we have a pretty good system that's working. And then um, well, I still see, I hate seeing numbers like that. Mm -hmm. But we do. I mean, we need the service. There's no doubt about it. I realize that there's things in the works to help the revenue side if they work, but. I go back to what we talked about before, just throwing money at something doesn't fix the problem. Well, we have a uh, meeting set up with Aaron. Let's get back. I don't think it would hurt. Maybe on the I mean, next agenda and get- None of us are blind. We see what's going on. And it doesn't like, seem to be getting any better. No, if you look at the, uh, it went from, uh, just slowly getting worse. We only had one month that we was in the above the death line. The trend is is it's going deep. It's there. It's it's right there. It's Eleven, there. eight thousand, six thousand, sixteen thousand, twenty feet in the last four months or five months. If they want to get out of it, then we'll, then the supervisors or the county has to decide whether or not they want to take it on. If they want to take it on. Then we need to decide how it needs to be structured so that something changes by simply taking the county taking it over without making any changes that's not gonna it's not gonna fix the problem yeah financially mm -hmm. let's get a meeting set up for you well mayor and mayor next agenda you want or, to add a meeting or I say add a meeting. I think we need to have time dedicated to do this, don't you guys think? I think so too. Nine o'clock next Tuesday. I'll look at the agenda and see what's going on. Okay. And plus, I don't know what who's Houston have going on. I'll bet you he'll make time. I spoke to him earlier this week about something else. And I'm just wondering if I'll be a day by itself. I don't know if it'll take quite that long, but we, we need to at least get the ball rolling and, and get everybody in the same room. I wouldn't be opposed to having the Wapolo ambulance here too for some, there may be some questions That's on how I'm they're saying. running their department. I have some insight on that, but um, I would prefer to have Jason be here. And Yeah, we need to figure out a plan too, so. I agree. And every week we put it off, there's another week we're gonna be higher. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, one one foot farther in the hole. You want to approve the holidays? Yeah, let's get to the holidays here. We've yeah, I looked at them on the calendar. I'm going to make a uh, motion on that. Uh, um, which one is, uh, 13. 13. Okay, number 13, approve holidays for 2023 and 2024. It's my motion. Did you see them? Yeah, I got a copy. I'm looking at them here. Christmas is on a Monday next year. Mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Taken the Friday before instead of the Tuesday after. I'm okay. just asking the question. In the handbook, it is for Christmas Eve. Okay. I would much prefer the other way also, but that's what the handbook says. So that's what's the book. <laughs> okay. I'll uh, second that motion. Okay, we'll get a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we do the appointments? Everybody review those. And that's just a review. We don't have. No, just a review. Yeah. You know, There's no signature needed. Okay. Um,
we don't have no dirty jokes here. I called over and Liz, who handles that, was on the phone with somebody. So, so it'll be here before our meeting's over. I would hope so, yeah. So we're kind of on the 9.15. The line 15. Well, Adam Shutt should be. Adam Shutt or. And we can also start reviewing claims. Yeah. A few. And as we're well, here on the plans, Jim, here's the photo if you want that. Uh, Brad, did um, Brandon talk to you about working on the hallway and the sheriff's office yet? He kind of talked to me about it. I think he'll be talking to you. No, Light, lots some lights and ceiling grid upgrade. Maybe. Well, he did talk about that Yeah, early last year. But if we haven't converted that over to LEDs, we wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked about putting LEDs. That ceiling's a kind of a weird configuration. Mm -hmm.
Hey, how you doing? Hi. Sorry, don't hit me. Thanks for bringing that over. How are you doing? Good. Morning. I'm rolling. Good. How you doing? All right. Okay, I'm going to do 15. Um, going to make a motion to approve uh, for Class C alcohol license for heritage. Um, does it say all the actual email? It says, uh, yeah, no, like, it is yeah. license type class F retail alcohol license LF. But, okay. Never seen that one before because they take it out on the course and then they're able to have so the that, events and that, stuff. So oh, I think yeah, it's yeah. a different class. Right. Than... That's my motion. Okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Adam, you're we're just well, browsing through some stuff, so give us your report. Uh report is uh, guys in the field are out out uh, cutting trees and, and yeah. burning trees. I don't got done with um with uh, Port Hill last week. Um, got guys working on RT Avenue south of the gas plant and stuff like that. Uh, crew, crew guys are working on that. Uh, blades are out. We have laid their spread from rock now as best I can. Obviously, they're not getting too carried away with it. There's a chance it's going to snow, snow and, and, and get pushed into the ditch. But, we're, we're getting some things done. So. And maybe I just know blades off. They're there. <laughs> they are pointed, pointed, ready, ready to go. Yeah. I hope they just sit. Uh, we've got that big old pile out there that's just kind of looking at us. Are, are you ever going to come get us? It asks. But, <laughs> so, um, other than that, uh, you know, kind of geeks. Staying busy in the office here. Um, yeah. Sounds like the Iowa uh, Bridge and Culver is going to get started on that bridge. Uh, about the Cotter next week. Next Monday is their day to start. Um, so, so that road will be closed. And it, it'll be closed. We, we emailed everybody, I made sure to talk to the uh, Columbus school people to let them know about buses and, and stuff like that. So, which I be it, be it like that for the afterwards that that has been embargoed anyway, so we can't really run a bus across it anyway. So not a huge not a huge deal there. Um so yeah, I'm I'm guessing late spring, which could be May, June, or something like that, and and both done. They, they they obviously want to get in and get it done as soon as they can so they can get paid and move on to the next one. So, you know, so how busy a road is that on? Well, it's a it, it's a it's it's a farm to market road. You know, uh, traffic counts sixty vehicles a day or something like that. So it's not you know it's not a busy highway. Highway. And the other thing is, you know, it it it. It is way to burrow. So in theory, it shouldn't have any trucks across it. Now it does get, I mean, there's trucks across it all, all the time, but the, the piles on it are just worked out, you know, worked and old and broken mm -hmm. up. So I got a question. You said on the school buses, they shouldn't be going across the Burgle Bridges. Did I hear you say that? Well, it's a lot. It's, it's got a 12 ton weight limit on it. So I, I don't know what a load school bus way is, but the traffic will well, apply school buses too. Yeah. yeah. I just wondered. Yeah. So, um, other than that, I don't know much, much else. Um, and that would make a difference too on future for embargo roads too. Yeah. yeah. Never just heard that from that way. Yeah, which is which is so uh, part of the deal you know, keeping our our construction plans out uh, going and make sure that we don't get more of the bridges. Or when they do we can we can pick something. Probably. Yeah. 
And once that's all replaced, there will be no one. No, and it'll be 30 foot wide bridge and be a complete, completely up, up, up to modifying standards. Um, what we've been doing on our market bridges, we replace them up to 30 foot wide to make sure to get all the beam heads and all that across there. And we have heavy weights on it. Um, on, on these local roads, generally we try to go. We'd love to do 30 foot wide on a mall with some wooden bridge or half a million dollars or more than that. So we usually try to go with whatever fits. You know, that last year we there was that one out, out on Dunny, right? It was 20 foot wide and we replaced with culverts and went up to 26 foot wide, you know. So if it's a big if it's a big long bridge over a local road that will probably only go. 24 because they're just is it isn't is it, isn't isn't the isn't the funding on there uh on the on the, the part of market road so um so uh, I was wondering if you guys uh on the on the what are you doing on that is 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 what was agreed to is that gonna be applied to all of the non union things from this case okay five or so in our mm -hmm. department so oh all right um budget yeah we'll, we'll whenever we get over around it we're down to that um you know, so a, a question on budget this year do you want it all in one sit down meeting or do you want to do it in kind of you know first meeting second meeting and all, all that i guess oh we'll probably like we've done in the past, just a one. Mm -hmm. Unless there's something on it, they want you to revisit and come back. Right. Okay. Yeah, but it's like the past. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, um, I, I have some decisions, I guess, on some things, and you know, kind of interested in the revenue future and what the plan is going mm -hmm. for taxing and for bargaining and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm a little. Not sure how how to present it. I guess so. Hmm. You know, like uh, but, but basically, you know, we got you know a, a certain amount of normal revenue coming in, and that's gas tax and and uh, and local taxes. You know, and that goes up about two percent every year. You know, that's. 80,000 more, you know, you know, and I'm looking at this year with Rock, you know, 130,000 in, in, in mm -hmm. rock and expenses and, and wages. And then just assume everything else goes up 8%, right? You know, with pipes and all that. And then just kind of not sure how, how to look at the future on it. It's your job to look into the future. Yeah, and the crystal know. balls get pretty cloudy the way things are yeah, going. You know, I have, I, you know, I make a budget every year. And like last year, we only spent 93%. So it, it looked okay, you know. Even with fuel costs. Well, that was last last year. No, okay. This, this, this year, we're probably going to spend 100%, mm -hmm. except for that dump truck that I can't, you know what I'm saying? Right. There's always up, up and down things and all that. I'm just kind of, Curious what the long term picture is, and I'm, I'm I know I look ahead more than most people, but I'm an engineer, and that's way my job. Our brain works, so. so. Right. Yeah, I'd like to do like we normally oh. do this week and discuss before. Okay. Now we're gonna have to have you redo stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I have some contingencies on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't. You know, last year. Presented the budget under the assumption that there was, you know, under the there was what is our sales tax available, and 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 I got to the end of it, and wasn't that wasn't available? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That I, I want to prepare a budget that needs funding, I guess. So, so we can do that when when you guys want to just a little arm wrestle over that during our okay. budget. That's fine. Um, any questions for me or anything going on? Um, I, I, I did just 
repost on on the Facebook page asking the public's help to help figure out who is throwing trash out on on Panama Lane. <laughs> I mean, it it is it is every week, and our guys are getting sick of picking up diapers and other people's stuff. We know it's part of the job, right? But every every week having to you know quit doing what we're doing, one other once or once or twice a week and pick picking up diapers and that one yeah. now. Well, what's the cost of us a week? Well, if it's two hours a week for two people, two hours, two hours a week, so it's four hours, twenty five bucks a no, hundred bucks a week. Are we getting cameras? Um, I I called US 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 uh, US a uh, uh, cellular, and they have a a thing where um, there's actually a sale going on this yeah. week, so I was going to go and speak with the guys. Open, you know, uh, cameras. I think they're like 150 bucks, and then four bucks a month. So we can move them to different areas. Yeah, so it's just you don't want to have to do that, but you might have to, might have to do that. I'm always doing that, so I don't know. It's just we'll just find yeah. another place to throw it. Yeah, well, I'm gonna throw throw, throw it on 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 the highway 61 or something. I still throw it at all, but but um, <laughs> then we need to visit for for for. Uh, or fines. Yeah, we talked about this two years ago. We need to get back into. We need to go to the maximum allowable state fine. I talked to Adam about it. Mm -hmm. I think we can go up to. I think it's five hundred or seven fifty is max the state will let us go. Yeah, but we need to do that. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah we do catch them. That's the same problem. Off the walk a little waste. Yep. Trash waste. I've dug through some trash personally and found receipts and went through Adam. We prosecuted them and. Mm -hmm. You know, it works for a little while and then somebody else does it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the ones that are dumping out there, you don't want to go through. I went through them and there's nothing, there's nothing that you want to go through. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty. Yeah. I know we found someone, some evidence at one time and turned it over, but it wasn't, it wasn't well received because no one needed to be in there throwing down. Whatever. So let's get some cameras out there. So I'll oh, get yeah, the cameras and we'll, we'll do that. It's just you know, spending more money because people are lazy or selfish or whatever it is. But we're having a hard enough time trying to keep our county lucky good. We don't need somebody out there throwing stuff in the ditches. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you. Just for coming in. Adam, Stephen, and the kids. Yep. I'll swing around a little. Oh, we want to see you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, yeah, five minutes to where we can open up our public hearing. So, we let's get back. Maybe we can get our um, claims approved before our public hearing. Number is that mean? Or is there a number to it? The claims, it's like a. Um, didn't get put on it. Well, yeah. we were really trapping good last week, weren't we? It's not on our agenda. It's a recurring. Make a motion so. to approve the claims they submitted. Are you comfortable enough with the claims? Not quite yet. Just, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll right. keep your motion on the table and keep reviewing. Okay, looking at the claims, was the Board of Health had a card down? It's been in the shop for like ever. Is there any? He mentioned something about. Do I see we're still paying? Couple employees mileage and that's fixed though. The car is fixed now. And that was November, December. Yeah, the car is fixed. It's everything's back up to speed. She did mention that. So it's just carry over from carry that. over, yes.
Okay, we have a motion and second on the claim. All in favor? Aye. 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 So pass them around to be initial. I get initial every page, don't I? Yep. Front and back. I'm wearing it. Hey, hey. With yeah, I had to relearn to sign the minutes from last week. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we go in the public hearing for the cell of Hoover Nature Trail located in the south, uh, section 31, Township 73, range 3, and it includes part of the following parcels at 1231 203 That's my motion. Okay, okay you got a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. And I have nothing on that. No comment from the you have a resolution, don't you? No, I do. You used to give it to me earlier. Okay. Did I? Oh. Well, that's why I have the and then I have a quick one of these over here, but the resolution and it says to approve planning with the release. So no I got to try sure I put that in there. No, I red. lost my mind last week, part of the time, evidently, but well, I did get that done. We've all been there, so we'll have to look. That I keep getting interrupted every five yeah. minutes. No written or oral comments about this? No. No. So this was county property that we're basically selling to two individuals. It's an old, it's an old railroad bed. Yep. Let's just like the Rock Island and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's out by morning sun, isn't it? The, the, right off of 78 with Jay Hutchison, who's right there. Yeah. That's what we see. Thought we really had public comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
You making Jacob earn his money? Trying. Okay. <laughs> I'm busy. Good. Probably busier in the summer, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've been really busy though with the building move and everything too. It looks good. Yeah, thanks. Good. So you got the little door on and yeah, yeah, they got that. Manzor, yeah, yeah. What floor are you gonna have in there? Dirt or rock. rock? Rock in that manufactured sand for now, at least. It's an equipment building, cold storage kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not sure if we're gonna try to insulate it. We've got they had a plywood up on all the sides, but only the one little office room was insulated before. And so there's plywood already that we saved as much as we could, salvaged it, that you know at some point we might be able to put some insulation in or something like that. But right now it's not haven't moved anything in there yet because we're trying to get everything finished first. And they just got the rest of the manufactured sand and rock and stuff put in there that we got a really nice donation from River Products of all that material. So nice. That sounds of things you ought to turn into a huge humongous chicken coop. <laughs> they a lot of money in there. <laughs> yeah, but it's in town you can only have a block so big, can't you? I don't know that. You gotta know the right people. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I heard the mayor in his town was dead set against these little blocks. That's not in town, though. That's the concern. Yeah, you can do whatever you want out there, right? The turkey barn's not that far away. No, we approved a whole bunch of people to have chickens. Oh, I know. I think it's up to three. No roosters. Other people would come ask and then never do it. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. Well, our public hearing has been open five minutes and no public. I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. That's it. Okay, you got a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Now we have this resolution approving the quick claim deed for these two parcels. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, transaction is done. Okay, well, with that, Susan, I guess. Susan, did you have anything to say? They just closed the public hearing because there was no one commenting or there was no written comment. Forgot about the little stuff. Did she just get off? She just got yeah. off. Okay. Well, <clears throat> they've had seven minutes to public comment. I'm going to stick with our motions and yep. go on to. Um, I just saw her get on, so I thought if she wanted to say something. Okay. Um. Katie, would you be willing to start a few minutes early? Yeah, I was just going to text Susan and make sure. I talked to her yesterday, and she I think she was just getting on to see if somebody came on with any comments or anything. So, oh, yeah, she says thank you. Okay. Um, sure. So, um, first of all, welcome, Sean. Thank you. Um, I have a PowerPoint on 
from our annual appeal or our uh, you know, appeal, our annual report from last year. If you're interested in seeing that to see all the things conservation does, Can you otherwise, email it to me? what? Can you email it to me, or is something I have to look at? Uh, I think I could email it to you if I made it a PDF. Yeah, because it's a PowerPoint, so it's big. But sure. yeah, I probably could. And then if you want to glance through it or. We probably have extra copies of our annual report from last year if you want to look at it. And then at the end of this fiscal year, um, I'll do a PowerPoint for the supervisors. So since you're new or whatever, and then you can kind of see we have a lot of different um, things that we do in conservation and stuff and different hats everywhere. So okay. um, if you ever have any questions, feel free to holler at me or email me or whatever. I've been working quite a bit on budget um, along with the board. I think our board did a really good job of trying to figure out if there's places we could save money or, um, you know, uh, I guess to, to try to keep our budget down as much as possible. One thing that you'll see when we get it turned in and you start going through that is that we are asking to have an equipment and machinery line item out of the general basic account. Um, for as many years as I've been here, at least, we've been purchasing all of our equipment out of our reserve conservation reserve account. And so um, the reserve account is money that we've raised in uh, very specific sales of things or uh, fees that we collect that we are usually transfer somewhere between 25 to 100%, I guess, into that account at the end of the fiscal year. And so um, this year we're planning on asking for half of our equipment budget to come out of the general basic, and then we'll still have half of it come out of our reserve account as we try to work to maybe move that over. So um, we can discuss that more when we go through the budget hearing process. We've got a fire class coming up for landowners on February 9th. So if you know anybody that's interested in uh, learning about using prescribed fire as a management tool in their prairies, woodlands, um, on their own property. Uh, we're accepting or, uh, registrations for that right now. And so uh, that's a big cooperative. I think we call ourselves now the Great River, Southeast Iowa Great River Conservation Alliance or something like that. But it's all the surrounding county conservation boards, DNR, Fish and Wildlife, the Nature Conservancy, uh, the NRCS offices, solid waste, um, all kind of partner together to put on that type of a program for the public. So coming up, uh, we have a bunch of jobs out there that if you know anybody that we're hiring for our, all of our seasonal positions and doing interviews here shortly, I think the deadline is January 31st or something like that. And um, we have one naturalist intern, two summer rec interns for the education staff. And then for the maintenance staff, we have a six month uh, maintenance position, and then we also have two uh, just summer mowing positions. For the maintenance stuff, you do have to be at least 18 years old for the fair labor laws, but for the environmental ed positions, um, you can be 17, um, or I mean, I suppose it could be younger, but you have, you have to be able to drive and all that sort of stuff, so. Um, and then we have one full-time position open right now. Um, I think I might have told you guys at the last meeting that Laura Semkin's leaving. She's moving back to Missouri. And so um, we've already done three interviews for that position. That job uh, application process closes January 31st also. And so um, we're looking to get someone hired to take over for that. Laura leaves on February 21st, I think is her last day. So that'll be coming up pretty quickly. I did just put the seasonal jobs on Facebook. So people might start to see them more, but um, if you know some, somebody that'd be interested. As far as maintenance, they've been finishing up the building move. They got the door put on the other day. Um, all the inside stuff is done. They've got the fill around the outside of it. Um, so that's coming along pretty good. They've been doing some winter maintenance and prepping equipment and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think we've been doing some interior painting at Toolsboro. So I think they're going to go shut the water off there today since we're kind of mostly done inside of the building there. Um, they've been pretty busy. We've got uh, L&M is going to spread. I forgot to talk about it at our meeting, but last year we had a donation from the DeBoer family for a handicapped hunting blind. And we thought that we had the Waffle Shop class building it last year, and then they weren't able to. 
um, because of schedules and, and some other conflicts. And so then the Wise of Muscatine was going to do it as soon as they finished with their chicken coop that they were building, which lasted until the end of the, the year. And so our guys were going to try to do it. Well, we've been crazy busy. So L&M is going to build that chicken coop. So hopefully any day now we're going to have a truck. What's that? The honey line. Did I just say chicken coop? Yeah. I cannot talk this whole week. I cannot say words. Words are not my friend this week. It's terrible. Yeah, they're going to build the honey blind. And so we've been, we don't have perfect plans once again, which makes it kind of hard because we have students building it. But we're working with Shrox and with um, Jesse Register to try to get that stuff all finalized. And then Shrox will just deliver the materials to them. And uh, like I said, we have the the donation from the divorce to help pay for it. And then we'll have to figure out where we're going to put it for sure. Um, so that's all been going on. The naturalists have been busy too. They just had a big winter nature camp over the holiday break. They did a New Year's Eve um, party out at Virginia Grove. There's other programs coming up. We've been doing interviews. They're prepping, getting ready to go to the city councils for the summer rec program uh, this coming summer. And so um, everything's just kind of been going along. I know budgets are supposed to be turned in. Um, I've been talking to Sandy, we're kind of holding off because we need to know for the salaries what to put in there. I was kind of asking, do you want us to just put it in knowing the salaries are wrong or do you want us to wait till we have the actual... We, we got that on our, later on on our agenda here today. You sure. we, know. we should know by the after today. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. That way we can get those turned in, so. Um, questions for me? All right. Um, I suppose you don't know what time you're going to be discussing that uh, sometime after 1030 or are you going to squeeze it in where you have time or do it'll you know? probably be after 1030. Okay. All right. I'll try to come back for that. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, there's plans on um, going on. Um, just put in handicap accessible hunting blind plans, and there's several plans that came up that you can print them off. Well, a lot of them you have to pay to print them off, so you can look. No, for, you I, can look at it. Okay, if you want to email that one to me that you found, is it six by eight? I'll find. It. I'll look. Okay, it. we're looking at a six by eight, and uh, it says like free PDF, whatever. But when you click on it, you actually <laughs> have to pay. And so I was asking them, I said, I'll pay for it if you want me to. Like, I don't have a problem doing it. They can keep the website open on a computer or a laptop and look at it directly from there. But um, yes, and the National Wild Turkey Federation has one, but it's not as, uh, it doesn't have all the dimensions and everything like it's exact is what you might want for kids to build. So just guessing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Don't okay. you have another you. handicap line? We have one already that's out at Kara Woods. And so um, the DeVore family uh, wanted to donate money to have another one put up. And so um, they donated that money last year. And we, like I said, been trying to get it done and just everything hasn't aligned. And so we kind of thought we'd do it last winter. And then we, I mean, we didn't even have this stuff until March last year. So then we're going into burning and busy season and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah. Just got put by the wayside. So yeah. Yeah. And then we thought, well, we'll build it this winter. And then we ended up building, moving and all that stuff. And so we haven't got it done this year yet, but we're really excited because the industrial tech classes love to have projects like that. Right. And so we're providing the lumber, they're providing the materials, and then we'll have a great product when it's right. done. So if you want to watch the hobby, please let her know. Okay. I gotta go down the hall. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. At our link meeting, Bobby might start reporting quarterly. Yeah, just we talked with about the state that. taking over. There's just there's no reason to do it every month. Yeah, and also with the link, I forgot to. We're still discussing that four county region that Our Lady is managing right now. 
it's just a, everybody's thoughts, I think, even including that region, that is it a matter of time that the state will force the two to combine. So there's a lot of ongoing. I'm surprised they already have it. That's probably took as much or more time as a lot of things on their link. Maybe. Should have asked her if that's any welded frame because most of these got a welded frame on and it's got wood covering them. Yeah, I think this is some two by fours. Yeah, it'd be simple to make. I got probably 3,000 plans for buildings, small. Maybe I can find something like that. I've got two portable blinds, but not handicapped. Yeah. Yeah. The windows will be the hard thing. There is a special window for hunting, which probably wouldn't get broke out like that. Mm -hmm. Well, then you put it on a skid that just complicates it because then you got to do a ramp. Yeah. Are you I don't know if he'll jump on or not, but. Well, it's a new way to do it. Can you go ahead? Or do you want me to wait for Bobby? No, go right ahead. Okay. So, for general assistance, our foot traffic for December was 54 phone and 34 foot. Um, there was holidays in there, and I was also on vacation for a week. And then um, for the food pantry, in December, there was 20 households that were served. That was 54 individuals receiving food. There was also one holiday there. We did open up on January 3rd. Um, it was a holiday for the county, but we opened it up because we didn't want two Mondays in a row with people going without food, and it was actually quite busy on January 3rd. So we were glad that we did open it. Um, and then just to give an update for Sean, it used to be open on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, and we went to Mondays because the school is open on Thursdays and they were open every week. So it was kind of duplicating businesses, I guess, as far as Mondays and Thursdays. And so um, so we went to just Mondays for the local pantry and the school has changed their hours. Some I think they're open two Thursdays now. But um, so, yeah, we just make sure if somebody calls and they need food, we open it up and we get the food right away. So if somebody's. Hopefully, nobody's going without food in Spice County. That's their goal. So, so every Monday from 10 to 12, 10 to every 12. Monday. Okay. Yep. yep. And um, sometimes we're closed to a, due to a holiday, but um, we kind of pick and choose according to, like I said, January 3rd, we went ahead and opened. And so we try not to be closed too often. So. Has it changed on the food uh, availability of meats, foods? Uh, we've, we've received a little bit more from Food Bank of Iowa. It's still low compared to what it should be or average should be. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we're okay. I wouldn't say we're abundantly full. So, yeah. And they give you a, a reason and when they're going to start stepping it up? Have you heard? Um, they have stepped it up, but it's just hard for them to get it also. It's just supply and demand, and their retailers that they were getting food from, it's been difficult to get from, and the pricing, and they've started purchasing things where things were being donated, and so, yeah, they've changed things on their end, too, but it just trickles all the way down to the food pantry, so, yeah. Um, Let's see, the mobile food pantry was not open in December, so that was also another reason that we wanted to make sure we did have availability. Um, also, my my phone, when anybody calls, it um, if they leave a message, it gets, trans gets transferred over to my cell phone, so I know right away if I have a message in the office, so if it's a food issue, then I know 3 a.m., my phone's going to go off, you know, it doesn't happen, but um has it happened <laughs> um but yeah <laughs> but um yeah so 
I don't publicize that. So hopefully, Jim, you don't have to put that in paper that it rolls over to my cell phone because I don't want clients to know that they can call and I'm going to get a hold of them. You know, I it, there's a lot of times their emergency is not my emergency and I have to remember that in my position. So, um, but we do try to help them as often as we can. Um, but the mobile food pantry is open in January. It's open on Wednesday, January 25th. That's a Wednesday. It's at the Briggs Center. The truck typically arrives around 11.30 or noon, um, and we advertise survey 1 to 3.30. Um, as soon as we get that food unloaded and we have it set up to go, and then we go ahead and get it to the clients because there's times we have clients that are waiting there at 11 or 11.30. So we get them in and out as quickly as we can. Um, and then as far as, um, I wanted to give you a quick update for general assistance retreat information. The last retreat we had for Iowa, it's where all the representatives, kind of like ISAC school, it's where all the reps for GA um, get together in usually the Des Moines area, and it happened last in 2019. So I was inquiring about it, and so now we have a committee put together, and I'm on that committee to go ahead and get it planned, get the agenda rolling, and we're looking at possibly May. We don't have a date yet. We're in the process. We met once via Zoom with the committee, and we'll meet again at the end of the month to, to get that going. But in the meantime, I was contacted by um, a new local um, GA rep that had some questions, and so I explained to her about this Iowa retreat that we have, and um, we went ahead and put together a local GA rep group. So our first meeting was this month, and it was in Burlington, and it consists of anyone locally, um, like Washington, Henry County, and Muscatine County, um, Lee County, Eliza. Um, anyways, all of us got together. There was 10 of us that got together um, earlier this month. So just to kind of bounce some information off each other. And for, there was two new reps to the GA program. And so they had a lot of questions. So it was really nice to get together and kind of have that time together. So pretty much everything turned in budgets. Um, you'll see those changing. And um, I won't talk much about it because we'll obviously go over those. And so uh, I'll wait for your guys' recommendation as far as salaries. And then we'll talk more about that later. So any GA questions? I'll talk a little bit about what we talked about yesterday, if that's okay. Go for it, yeah. So um, after some people saw a thing in the paper about the new furnace for the <clears throat> new pantry, and this may have been visited in the past before, um, maybe so. Uh, I was contacted by a school board member and, and asked why we couldn't combine forces. Why are we? Why do we have two food pantries? Why do we have two buildings? Why are Why aren't these? And it made sense. So uh, I told him I didn't know those answers, but I would go ask the questions. Um, yesterday I come and talked talk to Cindy for a while, and apparently they are. They do the same things, but they're different entities and they don't mesh very well, um, which is the easiest way to say it, I guess. Um, there wouldn't be any particular reason why they couldn't be in the same building if they were separated. Um, I don't know if that's an option or not. So um, I'm still asking questions. Um, I'm going to talk to Kathy Barrick. I haven't done that yet. I want to talk to her and um, from a from a economical standpoint, it makes sense to house them in the same building, but I don't know logistically how that that can happen. So um, I'm, I'm asking questions and we'll, I'll, I'll let you guys know what I find out and I'll be in contact with Cindy too. So. Yeah. And I don't know for any questions too, if you had any, but um, yeah, I referred him to Kathy because she is the director for the local pantry here. We do have a board that I sit on with them, but um, she is the director, so I referred him to him or to her. And then, yeah, with the school, it's yeah. it's just different partners, yes. programs. We make a bio. Well, with restrictions, it was yeah. brought up that the whole basement is is empty, and. Uh, well, 
if everybody is willing and there's a way. The basement where? Is yeah. At the old preschool. That's not true. Because I I know when I worked there, that's that's got a lot of janitorial stuff down there. And it's where they keep their excess equipment and all. Okay. I'm not saying it couldn't be rearranged and all, but it's okay. Don't we'll, we'll think that it's just sitting there empty. Okay. And we talked about one time about this, and there was a group that cannot go to the school. That's on. Um, they've changed that. They're open to the com community, yeah. and so. But if they have certain problems in their life. Oh, possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that's why we. Yeah, school has restrictions say, of their own. Some people can't go on school grounds. Can't be with it. Yeah, it just seems silly. We're both paying heating bills. We're both yeah. paying cooling yeah. bills. Yeah. We're both. Yeah, because yeah, the schools just did this two years ago. Yes, it's not maybe three. It's I don't know. It yeah. seems like it's been a little while now, but yeah. Maybe before COVID. And we questioned in a meeting with the, the staff uh, from Des Moines that came out here. They had the reasons, and some of the reasons was that is not everybody that's and going to the property. So. Not getting involved with anything. This was always, I know, I know. To it, count, yeah, to ten, ten. count to 10 slowly. I'm being angled here somehow. But yeah, you think you got a nice something that'll work good for no, everybody? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But, yeah we'll, we'll keep asking questions. That's all, yeah. that's all I can do. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for your effort. Yeah. I haven't been doing anything, but. <laughs> That's what politics do, right? Talk. Okay, we have Bobby. Hello. Hello, Bobby. Well, I guess we are ready for your update. Okay, I decided not to come down today because I'm coming tomorrow. <laughs> um, so I'll give a little bit of a background because we have someone new. Um, hi, I'm Bobby Wolf. I'm Sean. I'm, what was your name? Sean Maine. John Maine. Okay, yeah. nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. um, with the Mental Health and Disability Services, we now are in a region. We have been since 2015. Um, since this year, actually, fiscal year 23, um, the MHDS services are no longer funded by county property tax dollars. So in the past, they had been and that new legislation that passed has eliminated that from the property tax rolls. So we are now solely funded by the state to provide MHDS services in a regional formatted um, structure with a governing board that oversees us. Randy used to be our representative. And so now that you've replaced Randy, Chris has come onto the board again, which he has experienced because he was previously our representative from Louisa County. Um, that governing board does have a, rep a board of supervisor member from each of the eight counties that are included in the Southeast Iowa Link region. So as far as the local budgets go, um, we do have a sub fund because the employees that are paid for MHDS um, are still county employees. And therefore we have a sub fund that we utilize, which is basically pass through dollars um, where we pay our employees and then we reimburse that sub fund fully with the fiscal agent fund that we have. And Des Moines County is our fiscal agent. And so that money that comes from the state to fund our services and our administration comes directly from the state to our fiscal agent fund. So just kind of a quick overview. Do you have any questions about that, Sean? No. Okay. So we will be working on our local fund six account. Um, what we've done in the last few months um, is we have done a little bit of restructuring, which I'll quick overview. Um, and we also will be working on developing what payroll um, and also benefits will be coming through sub fund six, which will include um, funding for my coordinator disability services. And also we fund Cindy to provide us with part of her services are also MHDS. So um, the governing board does make the decisions on the coordinator of disability services salaries and any raises that we have from year to year. 
So that was part of the discussions last month and they did approve what they wanted to see for our salary increases for the next year. And we are preparing the sub fund six uh, accounts right now, which we'll, we'll pass on to Sandy. And then at the local level for our assistance that we have, because we have, uh, I believe five assistants between all of our eight counties that um, we honor whatever the county is providing to their employees, non-elected officials for their salary increases. So once we have that from Louisa County, then we'll be able to finish up what we need to include in there for Cindy. Um, we also had some of the restructuring, um, as you know, Chris may have already told you, is that the South Central region, which is just to our West, um, their CEO has uh, left her position and has taken on a different position somewhere else in Iowa. And therefore the CEO of the Southeast Iowa Link region um, came to the governing board and has talked with their region and our region. And an MOU was signed for the interim of our CEO also administering their regional management plan, employee structure and service delivery in that region. And so that region does include four other counties. Um, we've worked with them in the past, so we're very familiar with them. Um, so that MOU will go through Ju June 30th of this year. Um, there may be some legislation that comes out that modifies. There's been a lot of talk about regional structures and what they look like, what they should look like. Um, there's been talk about what that restructuring may look like in the future. Um, so we may be impacted by that. Um, so at this point in time, it was chosen just to do an MOU to do an interim assignment of our CEO to assist them. Okay, um, so in our governing board meetings last few months, I did not make the meeting last month. I was on medical leave for quite some time, so I'm just getting back into the office. Um, we have a, we approved all of the claims. What happens is we uh, do a lot of claims processing to pay the providers for the services that they're delivering. And um, we also take those to the governing board for approval. So in December and January, um, those service and administration expenses were approved by our governing board. Um, the, as of December 31st, our year-to-date expenditures were $1,974,990.59. And our ending fund balance as of December 31st was $6,179,127.08. So we had been in the process of, um, we currently have to, with the new structure of the state taking over our funding is we have to submit ending fund balance certifications to the state. We had to redo that because of some um, language and they had to determine whether or not some of the expenses could be in fiscal year 22 or 23. So once that clarification came out in November, we had to resubmit our certification. With that certification and our fund balance, uh, we will no longer be receiving any funds for the rest of the fiscal year from the state of Iowa because we do have a fund balance. Um, part of the reasons for that fund balance, um, I'd like to explain to you, which is uh, currently the Southeast Iowa Link region has five RFPs out. So for services that we are looking for providers to be able to uh, provide for us, for the clients that we serve. Um, those RFPs include a 23 hour observation and holding for adults, crisis stabilization, community-based services for adults and youth. Um, crisis stabilization, residential services for youth, mobile response services for adults and youth, and also assertive community treatment services. So we let out four of those five RFPs um, earlier in the year, did not get a response from any of the providers. Um, we, have des we had designated funds for these services so we could begin because these are core services. However, all of our providers are expressing to us that we have a workforce shortage as everybody else in Iowa, but specifically in Southeast Iowa, where we have a shortage of staff in our field, uh, not only to provide service, the current services that we have, but to develop new services um, 
it is proving to be very difficult. Um, we haven't had any responses to the RFPs yet. We do have some interest in a few of them, um, which we are exploring and talking with the providers about. Um, those RFPs are left open. If you would like to review them, you can look on our website, which is seiowalink.org, um, and anybody can review those, look at what services we're looking for, and if they feel like they are able to provide those services, they can submit a proposal to us. And also, just so that you know, on our Southeast Iowa Link website, we've also uh, have a little section on there for career connection for people who are interested in getting into the mental health field um, to connect people with uh, po potentially employment opportunities um, in the mental health and brain health service arena. So we have done a survey with all of our providers and sent that out. We use that as support to submit to the state to reinforce the idea that we have workforce shortages as everybody, I know, but specifically this needs to be something that um, we're advocating for, for the legislature to address um, because we do have a problem uh, in order to provide these services, we are gonna have to enhance those services, increase rates so that we can pay those, uh, um, you know, pay the employer to pay their staff. Currently, what we're hearing from the providers is that um, even community-based services at this point, um, they're unable to provide hourly services uh, or, or those services are, are provided less. And they're more focusing on the daily services because of the structure of those and also the reimbursement rates of those. Um, and with that, our drop-in centers are being used more because uh, clients may not be able to access those hourly services in the community to support their living environments. So we are also advocating for the drop-in centers to be considered as core services because they're currently not. And um, that, Put, could potentially put them at risk of not being funded in the future, which of course to us in this Southeast Iowa, those are safety net services for our folks um, to ensure that at least we have eyes on them and there are services and referral and connection to other services through that drop-in center service. So because it's legislative season, we're talking a lot about uh, some of the legislation, how we can impact that and things we would like to advocate for. At the next governing board meeting in February, uh, the children's uh, advisory, we do have a children's advisory and an adult advisory attached to the um, MHDS services. And so we will be looking at what the legislative priorities are and what we're advocating for, which of course will be things including um, how to support the staff structure, increasing rates, uh, looking at substance abuse services also, because we have a lot of co-occurring things going on with patients that we serve. Um, they haven't had rate increases for over a decade. So really need to look at and advocate for those increases so that we can employ folks and uh, keep those and retain those staff to be able to provide services. I've experienced substance abuse centers closing their doors, not being able to provide residential services because of those staff shortages. We have the same thing going on in the mental health field too. Um, let's see, talk about the CEO. We also in the last few months uh, completed an annual report uh, that is due to the states due December 1st. That has been approved by the state of Iowa. Um, if you guys would like to review that report, we, we went over that in all of our meetings, um, adult children advisory stakeholders meetings and also governing board meetings with the region. But if you'd like me to send that to you, I can do that. Any interest? Yeah, you said, uh, could you send it to my email? Sure. Other things would be, we did, um, I think I talked to you maybe last time about it, we were in the process. Uh, we did contract with the Provider First Resources to open a, an IRSH home, which is an intensive residential service home in the Burlington area. Um, that has now been open. Uh, I heard it's a beautiful home. I didn't get to go to the tour, uh, but that will provide services to five patients. Um, 
So this is for individuals who maybe have had multiple hospitalization and failed at other placements. It's really a high intensive service um, to hopefully stabilize those folks and be able to serve them in the, you know, in a community type setting with 24 seven supports. Um, it is not full at this point in time. They are staggering in is what I hear their admissions, but um, still working on that. We do have crisis stabilization residential services in um, Burlington and also Fairfield, which is on both Eastern and Western parts of uh, our region. But um, because of staff shortages, our provider in Fairfield uh, is not accepting, has not um, new patients, actually has closed their doors um, due to those staff shortages. So we're currently operating with one crisis stabilization residential unit in Burlington. So we are monitoring um, utilization rates and whether or not, I guess, we're having a good flow and able to serve individuals as, as they need that type of placement. We haven't had any problems with that being full uh, 100%. So at this point in time, I think we're okay, um, but it is something to be noted that that other service has been closed for now. Also, um, I saw and wanted to just make note that it appears that the disability rights is now suing uh, Garcia, um, state of Iowa for the lack of children's services, um, mental health, brain health services. So we are keeping our eye on that as well. And we'll follow that. And Optima Life Services, um, has been around and informed us that they are now going to start providing BHIS services, which are behavioral health intervention services for children, and also IPR, which is intensive psychiatric rehab for adults. Um, so just another service that we may be able to utilize in Melissa County, because they did say that they were willing to travel over to our county when I met with her. Other than that, um, typical meetings I attend just for Sean's benefit, would be like our interagency meetings. I, I went to the fifth district legislative meeting in Ottumwa in December um, with the board of supervisors who also attend and all the other elected officials. Um, we have local and also regional CIT meetings, which are crisis intervention team meetings. Um, as I mentioned, we have one tomorrow in Eliza County at the sheriff's office at one o'clock. Um, so that brings together a group of folks to talk about um, intervention, crisis intervention, um, services we have a and also how to access those and any questions they may have um, we have a jail transition coordinator in the in the jail in Eliza County as we do in every jail um, in our region that is funded by the seal region um, who has been trained to be a CIT um, coordinator so she is the one Melissa Mace who oversees that meeting also, I attend like the stakeholders meetings for the SEAL region, uh, the SEAL governing board meetings. Um, we have management meetings every month with all of our CDSs. Um, I also participate in, um, there's a Cedar Ribbon Haven board that I participate in that's just across the Louisa County line, which is a, um, I'm a board member for them. It is a, uh, substance abuse uh, safe haven for women. So we have opened the doors finally this fall. And so that is a service that um, is close to Louisa that is accessible and they get a lot of referrals. And basically services look like have been flowing, typical service delivery with IPS, which is our intensive psychiatric services for supportive employment. Our drop-in center, mental health advocate services, jail services, um, nothing out of the ordinary, I guess I'll say. And our next board meeting will be on February 8th. And Chris and I talked about how often you guys still want me to report to you. Um, I still do like having some interaction with the local boards because um, these are local services. Um, just with there's not as much to report with it being state funded but at least i can provide some information um, 
to you about the mental health services that are available and, and gives you the opportunity to ask any questions about what services might be in Eliza. Okay, we, we have kind of talked about having you come quarterly, okay. but during the, why the assemblies, and if we if you need some help uh, soliciting or, or lobbying for a bill, if there's something like that, we could do monthly for the next couple of months, but then when the session's over, go go to quarterly. Okay. Sounds good. Just thinking outside the box because there's times to, there's a bill that a little bit of uh, grassroots help around here can help in Des Moines. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. And, you know, we'll be getting that legislative priority list out next month. So that'll be perfect. I can, yeah, it yeah. will be after our governing board meeting. So I'll be able to pre present that to you all. Okay. How does that sound, everybody? Yeah, that's what we basically was talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sounds, we'll see you next for the next couple of months, and then we'll go quarterly. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Or until Brandon gets here. Um, do we want to go down to 14 and discuss elected officials and county employees' raises? No. <laughs> well, you know, like the Rust Board meeting, which didn't get much of a raise, but still had to raise our membership to pay for it. Uh, that was, we spent more time on it than our general business. And it's kind of interesting to uh, hear what other counties, I, I think we're, we had some catching up to do, but we're paying a little better than what other counties are getting. But a lot of seven and eight percent. Yeah, I agree. I, I, last week I put my count board in my file. And it here. I have a chair up before. Yep, yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we have to just remind we have to the auditor treasurer quarter all has to be what we're gonna basically can't be lower than what we're gonna give employees because the 85 shares the same way but the way that's separate that's not gonna be a problem and they ought to be a cut a quarter can't be one can't be cut and the other one's not. They all have to be equal. Or we can take ours to zero. But ours is the only one that is. That's we can cut one. more it's control of, yeah. We said all of them, but we've got some catching up to do. If we cut them all by 50%, how, how much tar are they going to throw on us, you think? Well, it depends what we give our employees. We can't cut some of them 50 if, if we're going to stay consistent what we did. Out to the sheriff, I mean. Right. So we can't do that. Well, I was just bringing it up for discussion. Yeah, but I'm just saying, though, I, I don't want to see that. Uh, or uh, unions collected more than our non-participation. It's Oh, 
Um, it's for you. It hasn't been out there. You need to see it. It's like 10%. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. So if we went the auditor, treasurer, recorder, ten. That makes the county and the sheriff 21%. That's what I'm hearing. Then 21%. And then we go Is this like a 6.25 cut, isn't it? Yeah. And that brings the supervisors, if you do it all the same, it's six of them. Quarter. I don't know if you do. I just round them off the versus even percents or what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Whatever we want. It is at six, I guess. No, it would go to six point two five. Two five. Okay. Yeah. I don't go out any farther than that. I would be um, I think that would be a, a excellent phrase compared to what everything else is going. It's more than what we originally was thinking of back in the head, but I think it's a positive for everybody and <clears throat> hope so. It's a lot of money. I think it's fair. It's, that's 420,000 just at 10 percent on the compared to what they've been getting in previous years. It's, that's now for, for us to figure out where to find it. <laughs> that's right. That's our job. <clears throat> so are we Well, I think um any more discussion or input, or and then that would leave the employees at ten, right? You want to put it forward? I'm good with it. I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay, we got a motion and a second. I'll you repeat the motion for us. The motion is for a uh, ten percent for the auditor, treasurer, recorder. 21% for the county attorney and the sheriff, and a 6.25 for the supervisors. Is that and 10 for percent employees. for all the employees? And 10, yeah, it, it, it should trickle down with 10%. I think it would go to conservation and board of health, and, which I know they have questions. And the engineer is non union people. Have I covered it? Everybody? Just got to say all in favor. All in favor. <laughs> all right. All right. We're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Pam, you're here in two ways. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't shut it off. I just said it off. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank I think he's on the way. He's on the way. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Kind of like how things have changed. And so, like, you know, for a while, for a day that night, like, you know, um, you know, like, I think, I think what Ernie was kind of getting at or from where my brain goes initially was like, you know, a lot of people back in the day, like, 
Oh, Mark, we had a little bit of discussion about the ambulance before you were here. Yeah. We're, we're going to, if you, if you're able next week, we would like to get on the agenda and get everybody together and have a that would be great. big discussion about that. that we can see how far in the red we are and we need to we need to do something. I take it you've got the uh, yeah, report. report. It was on our yeah. Also, when you come, could you also show what's what's still billable out there? That's on that sheet. Well, current, if we can, because I know it's going into another week and you should be start getting some stuff to coming in. And that way we can look and see what where we're at as far as because I don't know if it has all of our billables because what I've seen on that sheet, I didn't see what outstanding everybody's that's outstanding for like uh, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, Social Security and all that stuff was as far as the bill of this. Social Security, I'm trying to Medicare. Medicare. Yeah, Medicare. I, I, Medicare. I can, uh, I will try to bring that to you. Um, I think, if I understand on the bookkeeping, it is it's a kind of a strange thing in that when it shows the income for the individual months, every time he updates that he goes back and if they collected something that was a bill in March then he goes back and changes March instead of current and so it uh, it it's doing what you want it to do I mean if you're seeing it but you're not seeing it current it may be backdated so, and what he was saying today is he's finally had time to sit down and start doing billing. He was in here earlier this morning to ask to get this on the agenda about the many members of the, and he was saying that he finally has time to sit down since he's not able to run the ambulance that he's able to get caught up. Yeah, so that's telling me that he's behind on his billing, and that's where I wanted to kind of see where we was at. See what I'm saying? Because what he said, we're all uh, going to get in the same room and we're going to, yeah. that, that would be bad. Yes. You're not accusing anybody no. of anything. We just need to get it figured yeah. out. Well, I'm going to plan and move right. forward and make it positive. It yeah. looks like it's it's for everybody. Well, it it isn't going to get positive. No, but we can't let it keep getting more negative. <laughs> so we got to do some changes. Yeah. But I, uh, it, it, but it isn't going to get no, but we need to change. Move, we need to get change. Move forward, change. not backwards. Well, and I, I would agree. I would agree with you. Um, and again, we, we can discuss it next week. But if you go to a paid service, you're not going to get it possible. There's no way to do that. But, you know, get to be determined, I think. But I. I I know. Way way it is right now that you have four on a payroll, it's gonna be very difficult to get that. It'll be impossible. Yes. Um, but we just have to look at the whole thing. Maybe there's something out there we can do. I don't know. I'm not giving up. I'm gonna look forward to it. I'm outside the box thinking that we'll have to do something different. I'm also gonna pull Jason Griffin in. From Wapolo, just right. so we have. If I have questions, he was kind of my go-to guy. So yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, the more minds we get in here, the better off. Yeah, I sat talked to Dave quite a bit yeah. last week. But, but the the only way that I know that the thing could even well, you'd have to set it up similar to uh, Wapolo, which is fine. Uh, but we don't have volunteer service. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's just kind of fine. I don't think you're going to change it. Oh, well, we could share some services between the two. That would help. There's a lot of little things I think that we can do. This isn't a, a, a one. It's an onion. There's a lot of layers to this. And a, and a little bit here and there. That's I a think, big onion, too. I think we can work some things out. Well, and again, the way I the way I look at it, the expenses is the, is the only payroll. 
yeah. is paywall. And if you go down and look at each each line item, um, I don't care if it's on 10%, I don't care if it's on 20%. That isn't going to be enough. Yeah. We're seeing the same thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, hey, hey, how are you? How's it going? Oh, hey. But we just have to but no, but we'll look, look at it, throw it out on the table, and yeah, talk about it. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's how things get fixed. Yeah. If you want to keep it, we it's fine. We can keep it. What's that? The name of service. Don't make an offer. <laughs> no, I said if you'd like to keep it. Don't. <laughs> I'm having fun with you, Mark. I know. I know. Yeah. The service is very important. Well, that's and we have to figure out well, well, to make the the least amount of impact dollar wise to the the area and keep the service that we can. Well, I knew nothing about annual service before this. Uh, I guess I feel like I'm a little more educated now about it now, and. This is just my personal opinion. Is all the annual services need to be counted off, and you, then you might as well then you can do whatever you want. Right? I think eventually it will it will come out of that. I don't think we're there yet, but it, I think well, eventually. I'm not so sure. There's still some resistance in Buffalo, so well, I think that's too bad. I know. You do not have There's a good service there, though. Well, nine o'clock is a good where there next to a bunch of people. Huh? Nine o'clock work for you next Tuesday. Sure. Okay. Sure. That's what we kind of talked about before you came in here. That was perfect. You walked in. So. Why does everybody go to the back of the room? Scary. We're <laughs> 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 <Or> scary. <laughs> That way there's chairs. Yeah. Yeah. I've had dogs this yeah. before. That way there's chairs in front of me then in case I need to throw it. Oh, okay. Now when we really get mad, we throw these. There's foam rubber. It's like a marshmallow. I'd say it's the batteries in that button, okay, but those people are sitting here, so <laughs> Other crews is going to be a little bit late if you have another agenda item you need to go. You are it. Yeah, yeah you're it. it. We'll wait. Who's late? Who's going to be late? Uh, Turn the lights and sirens on. Let's go. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> <called her up. laughs> You've got the power. Yeah. Code three, let's go. <laughs> Oh, I've seen you guys go on break. I don't know. I watch cops. I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Randy. What are you doing, number 12? I, I didn't hear you talk about it. I heard you say something about Katie back. Um, it was just a review. Would you like to see the paper we reviewed? It's just the auditor and her. It just shows who's first deputy. Who's first deputy? And we don't vote on it. It's just they're just reviewing. Really but what are the point? Nice. What new hirees? 
Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. The, no. Also, in the new hires, it is one. Was it one? But it was Is that rate of pay that she managed on the year? Yeah, she was like, you want to see a five or one thing. Yeah. Do you want to see that? Yeah. Who's the new one? Yeah. Okay. Katie Walker. Katie Walker. Okay. I heard it back. I was just going to ask if I thought we knew her. Yeah. 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 Can I take pictures of the videos? I mean, I'm for that on this paper. Yeah, yeah. No, that's and for what you know. I have a face for radio, but sure. <laughs> Who's under one of the bottom gets some new things? Oh, okay. <laughs> you want us together with our arms? No, each other? individual. Individual. You want me to stand? Yeah. Probably we look at that. Yeah, I just want to get a headshot. And... For our one of most wanted posters in the post office, right? <laughs> That's I'm just like coming out of your head. Yeah, I've been there for a long time. Okay. I'm going to Photoshop that to make me look real good. Yeah, I'm going to put a pair of There you go. I would appreciate that. Stand up. Yeah, we got our. Look like you have a chair growing out of you. Well, sometimes it's really that way. You know, smile. <laughs> I'm taking one. <laughs> Yeah. I'm making a good man. <laughs> you want your head tilted? Do you want to straighten up? No, it'll, it'll be all right. okay. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Hey. Andy. I'm not saying well, you're an elected official. <laughs> got yeah. well, now they got something with her about her set. Yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, Brandon, they've they increased the, from the state on this, uh, and, uh, what we're looking for at the, uh, having a deputy or a, a police officer, uniform police officer at schools. Have they increased that? Because I see they're still talking about it. The levy, the levy failed. It's still, it's still up there. It's, it's, it's not kind of fast, most likely, when everybody's cutting taxes right now. But what they, they do have a separate bill which it's going to cost approximately four point something million per year, but it gives every school district under 1,000 students, it gives that school district $20,000 for them to use directly for a school resource deputy or an officer. That's the same. Now, if they don't have one, you know, they don't get that money. It just goes back to the general fund. I don't know the status of it. Taylor is supposed to keep me in the loop about it, um, but I've not heard anything recently. <laughs> because that was some of the stuff they talked about Taylor did on campaign and stuff like that. Yeah. I just wonder how I it's, it's his bill too. Yeah, I mean, kind of together, but yeah, I haven't heard anything so far. Because I haven't seen anything come up through. That's I didn't see anything. He said we know more at the end of January. So yeah, tremendously helped. Three different, three different schools. Yes, sir. We have uh, operational sharing uh, funds that yeah. comes with the per school, you know, kind of pretty type of uh, sharing agreement. Now I'm going to get more equivalent to about two students, which is going to be roughly. 
Okay. So Nine. what is the school? Yes. Yes. Are the schools going after this? Is the school going after this? As a, a representative, you guys have representative that represents schools on this type of stuff. Is it going after the, the lobbyists? The lobbyists. Yeah. Do you have uh, this, among other things. Right. I don't know that this is when you like at the top. <laughs> there, that's not true. That's more about school choice. Thank you all. Right. That issue, but yeah. This would be good. Because if you look at this, I mean, this is something that's going to be, is it something that you can sustain the fund without help? That's what my questions are, is where is this? Because I know the monies can be used for different things, like building money can't be used for other yeah. things. And now on this here, is this out of general basics where you can take it out of anything to fund this? It would have to come out of a certain kind of thing. This would, well, you could pay for it. You could pay for this out of general fund, but it, it's a be a big chunk for for us, uh, for most schools to come out of general fund. We have uh, what we believe we we uh, uh, there's at risk dollars that we can actually. No, it's a categorical that we can. Also have in there. Uh, but, uh, but again, you know, and trying to keep that down just like everybody else. So. Um, is that part of that twenty thousand? Yeah. No, that uh, I think what Brad is referring to is a new new legislation being proposed to to give uh, schools uh, this amount of money to, to put towards things like that, school resource office. Well, and where I'm trying to build is how can this be sustainable? Because for the future, you know, we don't want to start a program and then we've had them stop before because they're not sustainable. How can we make it sustainable? That's the only way we can if they put in uh, legislative. Directives that makes this forever because mm -hmm. this is something that's changing the world basically on making sure schools our kids are safe and mm -hmm. and how we can sustain it. Um, wow. I don't know how we can sustain it at our level. That's where I'm getting at is because of growth. I mean, we still have one in the school we haven't talked to them, and so um, somewhere. We got to ask for uppers to send some money down this way to help us keep it sustainable. Okay. Well, for us, it's uh, sustainable with the fact as long as they have the, the uh, categorical fund or different categoricals that we use. I mean, they've been around for many years. So it's just a matter of what you want to spend. And, um, every school is according to enrollment. So as long as you're, you know, a lot of times, a lot of things are affected by enrollment, but uh, as long as our enrollment stays up, uh, but you know, as long as they don't do away with that categorical state level, which I don't perceive them doing, right? We think this is sustainable, even with their declining enrollments, right? That would be the factor that, that would affect that. See, that's what's worrying me because I see this. Uh, I think LM is the only one that had an increased limit. This last year, yeah, I, I see we we had a decrease, yeah, it's so long. Mm -hmm. And I just what point is this going to be where this is a program in jeopardy? And that's where I'm trying to yeah. understand it. Well, uh, it's uh, it depends on you know, we haven't spent all of it in Columbus, we haven't um, levied our full amount for quite a while. We've been actually trying to get our our amount spent down uh, for that cat that particular at risk categorical. Um, but we think that this for us, this is something that is uh, the benefits to to having an SRO funded by this would be as valuable as anything we can we can do. And it's just one person, but just what's what's added as far as our students and the research we think is something that our community feels like it's needed. And uh, again, even with our declining enrollment, we we have been I, I don't want to say we've had trouble spending that money by any means, but uh, you know, we've never, th this would be, this, having an SRO position will take uh, a big chunk of, that That will be where we put a lot of our, most of our emphasis on, is, is in that uh, resource. Um, but we can fund like a guidance counselor 
salary out of it if we want to. It's just all a matter of how you want to right. move money around and make it work. Um, we do it every day. So. Yeah. <laughs> and again, I know we're all here trying to keep the tax rate down for everybody. I, I get that. And, um, you know, that the tax rate, as far as a school standpoint, if we don't spend all that money or we don't budget for it, it doesn't get levied. So that we keep it down that way by not spending our allotted amount, if you will. Um, but, you know, I, my, I guess my message uh, from the school standpoint is I feel like this is something that all all three entities can benefit from. I think, you know, you talk about, you know, and then I think it's already happening in the Wapolo and L&M &L &L school yeah. districts. That rapport with uh, with law enforcement, uh, that uh, the relationships and trust. I think Columbus is, and I won't speak for for Martin necessarily, but I think we're a unique community in our in our county. Um, we've been, it's true, we've been getting getting by without this for all these years. Why now? And um, I think the mental health issue. That's. That's becoming more and more of an issue in all different facets, but certainly uh, in uh, with, with students, especially. And um, I think it's money well spent. I really do, and I think the benefit to the community is again, you know, you're you're adding that um, that connection with law enforcement, and you're starting it at a young age, you know. Um, and I think the uniqueness of Columbus is that we have a changing population more so than the other communities. Um, we're getting new people in all the time uh, with Tyson. And, um, and certainly some of those people settle here in Wapolo. You know, you yeah, know, they, this, you know I don't want to tell you anything new there, but, um, you know, that's where I think the benefit comes in is in starting out with the kids at that age level. I think you hit upon something and hit with an SRO officer is that initially, yeah, you're going to see some benefits with the kids when the officer hits the doors, but the bigger return, I don't think you're going to see for almost a generation with the kids that grow up with an officer and build that trust and understand what they're there for. It isn't until they become an adult that they can look back or maybe they don't even realize the impact that that officer had when they were younger until they're an adult so Our hearts and minds yeah right it, it it's it's going to take that exposure throughout that school year 12 years 13 years until they're they're an adult and then mm -hmm. so yeah initially you'll see some right out of the bat but i think over the long term is where you're really going to see the, the benefit in it. Well, to talk talking about the money issue, I know that's always the hot topic, and then we have all the other benefits that come from it: the, the connections, the, the the calls for service going down, the you know the all the issues in the schools, plus there's just safety. And, and we talk about why now. Well, look at the changing society that we have, and and how things are going, and then. It's just, like you said, the hearts and minds, you get that from when we start rolling back the other way, it's another big chunk of that. But if you look at the money, I guess the way I look at it is no one wants to spend $100 a month, hundreds of dollars a month on vehicle insurance, life insurance, health insurance, or anything else, but it's sure nice when it's there. So this is almost like an insurance policy with the schools of, you know, you're, you're putting into this now, hoping to never have to use that, but it, that is there in place if it's needed. Yeah, really great. Cool. So th this is, I think it's pretty extraordinary for the Wise Academy to have almost all the schools with possible officer inside and they can, yeah, you can add up all the kids, 700, 500 a year, another 600, plus all the staff. I, that's pretty incredible, um, I guess, for our office and for the supervisors to say, we protect our schools in the Wise Academy. You know, I started this almost six years ago with Sean and I, Showing information down his throat, down his throat, and, and we got Cody here at the school, and it became successful. We're just starting at L and M, but you know everything that we're hearing, it's very successful. 
Uh, it's going to take the right person, and I'm, I'm not trying to fool you here. It will take the right person to put in the school um, for this to work properly. And we don't have the long list of people to choose from, um, but we're willing. We're willing to help. We're willing to manage this. I'm willing to try to run with it for whoever's there and supervise that person and make sure that they're going to be successful over there. Um, it's it's money extremely well spent. Um, just like Jeff was saying, you know, you got at risk, but if you don't ask for those dollars, you don't get those dollars. Um, general general budget, general fund. You might have to eliminate two similar positions, um, whether it be an at risk coordinator for the school or some type of other position. And the school resource officer may have to take that, those general fund dollars. Um, that's really the, the two avenues to choose from right now, I think, for the school. Um, now, operational sharing, of course, as well, but that's not that much money. Um, so, the money, does anybody have any questions on the breakdown? That's how I sent everything out yesterday. I looked at the breakdown and I also looked at the increases. Um, uh, per year, it's about a thousand dollars for the district and everybody else. The um, on the the fully equipped vehicle, who's that coming down to? Maybe. Well, it would just be replenishing. But we talked about this yesterday that it, it we would give it to whom whomever the SRO. I think that'd be fair because everybody's on our fleet. No, we would give the, in the newly purchased one. We would we would provide that to the SRO and yeah, right. Columbus Junction yeah. care. Since everybody's paying for it, and not you know not not get a new one, give road deputies a brand new one, and, and give that SRO one with one hundred fifty thousand. I think it's yeah. fair since everybody's sharing to give them the new vehicle. And how do we handle uh, vacations, sick leave? Uh, so, in the contract, it states that we ask that they use everything during breaks whether it be christmas breaks or summer breaks of course things happen and we can't prevent state code federal code we, we can't prevent them from taking vacation or time off or right. sick and personal they can do it during the school year but we ask that they do it during the summer and they have been doing it during, during the summer so during the summer um wow. what we have going on for waffle you know cody comes to the games and he typically stays around the community, Wapolo community, when he's on duty. Um, he goes to any special functions, and he takes his time off during the summer. So two, two to three weeks off during the summer of those of those two and a half, three months that you don't have school. Um, so that's kind of what happens during the summer. And the same things occurring with L now. You know, Greg went to football games. Uh, Greg did special functions on the weekends. So it's much more than that. About 75% of the time, their time per year is spent in the school during school hours. That's why that's where that 75% comes from. But the other numbers is them doing summer patrol, time off during the summer, and then going to Plum Junction events, football games, uh, softball, baseball, events that take place during end of May, June, uh, and then August. So it's not just strictly that 75% that they're spending. They're spending more. Um, in this case, you know, that's why I'm asking on the junction to kick in their their percentage as well. So it's not just that actual 75% that they're spending towards on the junction schools. So that makes sense. Thank you very much. You know, one, one thing, you know, needs to be disclosed to is the additional costs that, that I don't know. And those are work comp increases from adding another person liability for having that uh having that deputy on the street that they make a mistake or if they even if they don't it's still you have to carry that that coverage and it i don't know what it is five million per officer maybe i i'm, I'm guessing on that um the vehicle actual vehicle insurance that we pay for adding another vehicle insurance claims and insurance losses so those are all costs that i i can't figure up when doing this but the county more or less eats those costs. Yeah, and I know we go to a different threshold once we reach over employees, is what they told us last time. So I need to find out where yeah, we're at. So I think we're at 90, 
Yeah. And he's coming in the 31st, I believe. Yeah. So we need to probably address that with Jerry, see where we're at, and see what that does, because it puts us in a total different uh, category. I'm not sure how that affects us now. I don't know. I mean, so, but we can talk about that. It'll be interesting. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
lack of applicants possibly um and you know the county has a little bit higher pay or a person's probably more prone to apply to the county than the city i think the one of that position would be it'd be tough for the for the police department to put somebody in there and i and i, I agree with those things um you know like i i did discuss earlier that the county's taking those hidden costs or taking everything on if, if that officer does something wrong incorrect um purposely non-purposely it's the county's liability that we're talking some of those are hidden costs that you can't you can't see when you prepare for the future um so that's that's related into that that amount as well and you're probably thinking that yeah that person is not uh, on duty in the school during the summer and they'll be doing county falls it's probably your philosophy on on some of those percentages why you know like i discussed earlier probably three weeks out of the whole summer they're going to be taking their time off because they can't take it off during them. they can but they won't uh, during the school year there so they're not they're not patrolling those three weeks um we talked about this in discussion uh, with the school and then at the council meeting i believe is that you're also adding a deputy in the center of town for when there's nobody working shifts or on the junction the police department and that deputy's going to come out and they're going to handle calls um, we also the sheriff's office we work together mutually and work together well but we are handling calls no questions asked on the times when the cj police department has nobody on it I'm not going to clearly discuss those hours, you know, during an actual open meeting here. We don't need the public to know when they're not on duty, but we're covering all those calls. Um, and like I said, again, they're helping us when we need help too, but when there's no beyond, we're, we're covering all that too. And to my knowledge, the sheriff's office supervisors, we never charge Columbus Junction anything in the past for handling any calls, um, but we do charge every other town in uh in the line of county for those type of services so that's you know number two number three whatever it may be here it, if you guys are going to do it through the police department it may ultimately cost you more money to do it if you don't if we're not splitting in a three-way type of uh contract here and without running all the numbers i you know i, I don't i don't know for sure but it, I think you're adding law enforcement to your town, even though it's a different uniform. Um, and I think you know, going back, I do think it is a responsibility of the city to provide that law enforcement. You're just talking about or wanting to choose to contract that specific area with, with us. And it's that's just the numbers. I, I, I can't make it sweeter, I guess, for anybody. It's just the numbers are what they are. And I, like I said, I duplicated Greg Torres's uh, salary benefits vehicle um, and I had no issue with if you want to choose another vehicle I just was getting vehicle costs out of what we can get at that time I don't care if it's a Ford or a Dodge I, I don't care if it's a truck or a charger I don't care we can mutually agree upon that if it's cheaper um, but some things are available in some time so that's where the numbers the breakdown more or less comes from and that person can kind of more or less serve or persons deputies can serve to help on the junction and it's like a part-time officer that Don has on staff. I know I feel like it's three and hope that answers some of the questions. The city of Columbus Junction and their police department uh, highly respects the Wise County Sheriff and the Wise County Board of Supervisors. I believe between the two of them, they they share uh, back and forth. The other communities in the Wise County that the sheriff covers is on a contract basis, and those folks pay for it. Um, I believe that the sheriff has some responsibility in the city of Columbus Junction, and you know we are contracted. We are in the county. I know there are times when our police department, and I've encouraged them to do that and continue to encourage them to do that. If all of the sheriff's department is in Oakville and there's a problem in Cotter, that we need to go, and we do. Uh, I 
am very supportive of the school having the school resource officer. We are willing to uh, contribute to that. I still disagree with the breakdown. Um, and that's just where I am. Uh, we have a full blown police department. We spend a lot of money on our police department. Uh, as far as during the day, yeah, there's probably some days that we don't have anybody on because for some reason, but basically that's when we have a police officer on all the time is during the day. So having another one up at the school doesn't do us anything. Uh, it, it, so it would. Don, Donnie goes it would. up to the school whenever called and or other officers. More than happy to do that. It isn't the same as a school resource officer. I understand that. We want to be very supportive of the school. We want, and again, we're willing to do more than the five percent of the county is. But I think that's where we need to be. Is we need to be writing a flat check for a set amount for a specific period of time and keep us out. So let me not because we're not in it now. Let me address one, one, two things. First thing is when Wapolo started this and had that officer in the school, he, he was a SRO officer, but if there was a major emergency in town, they're out of the school and they're taking it. They're so that, that they're there, they're another officer. Yes, their job is within the school, but if there's some major meltdown, they're gonna, they're gonna respond. Let me ask you this question, because when we started this, when Brandon and I started this in Wapolo, it was Wapolo and the school, and, and they didn't approach the county, they just did it. Why doesn't Columbus and the school just do it? I don't know as we were asked. Uh, okay, I'm asking, why? why? I, we haven't been asked. So, to recant on that. It, we were asked first, and I deflected. Who asked? To, who to who asked? Yeah, it's it's my, my okay, I'm just. I, I, I stated, I believe that it should go through Columbus Junction Police Department and the City of Columbus Junction first to get their opinion, and I'd be more willing to help if they did not want to to do it. But but you you've got again, you you've got different things. What city is contributing to L and M? I don't they know that. Let's Grandview. Well, no, because they, they don't have they don't have police departments there, so it comes back. Yeah, but why don't you go to them and ask them to? That's what you're doing to us. Why don't you go to those other communities and ask them to write a check? Yeah, I never like Can I uh, just Martin brought up a just kind of take a side path here for a second? Um, I talked to our school attorney this morning about he reviewed the the uh, agreement and he was wondering about the possibility of um, having he's a little concerned with having it be a three-way agreement and and like mark mentioned and mark and i haven't even talked about this he told me he had some concerns that's all he told me but uh it just so happened i i was wondering if there would be any consideration to as mark suggested having this be between the school and the county and then the city contracting hours for for coverage uh, in addition to that. I don't know if that's feasible for anybody else or not um again I the school district doesn't mean we we have um I don't want to say we have the funds to do it for our share so we're not even part of this we are all part of it uh, and I want to, because I certainly appreciate everything that uh, the Columbus Police Department does. I just want to find something that will make it work for. It's got to work for everybody. I get that, and I don't know if there's a way that that could be done. Whether it, it would make the it would make the stuff that we're talking about a lot less complicated if we could figure out a way the district could contract with the county like you do with. With L and M, I get it. We have our own police department, 
to do a wonderful job. I've had, I've got children in the walk. Well, my last one's leaving Wapalo School this year, but at the time when that office was there, we had a couple in there, and my wife teaches there. I get a lot of feedback, so I know how successful that is. So, as a county official, I want to do everything that I can to get that officer over there. However, this needs to work. I want to get them there because it it, it works, and and you guys need it. So. So this we just need to figure it out. Yeah, it, one of the big issues, and this one was complicated. I wrote, the, I wrote the two other ones in there, but they're of course being checked by attorneys and county attorneys and, and whoever. But this is difficult to know what the salary is going to be. So when you say you're going to throw maybe a set amount at it, that might not even be fair. It, it should come down to percentages once that person's hired and once you sign the contract. You might. One deputy might cost one hundred five thousand dollars, and one deputy might cost eighty thousand dollars. It's all depending on your service. If they take insurance rates. There's there's a big difference in there, so it's it's tough to say set amount because that that might well, we're, that we're, might that might we're more than happy to take five percent. Be more than happy to. Yeah. This, this one is back, sir. Still comes back to the question of. It, okay, do what if we take the county out of it? What kind of costs are going to be there for Columbus Junction? And the, 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 the whole piece for high school and the rule and the city of Columbus would have to just like sit and see and see what they do with the way. We can't make a decision. We all prepared in our system. You just throw it down. 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 To me, I think that maybe several years ago, we used to have all of it. And because of cost, I could the challenge. Started out with it. Now you're asking yeah. us to run yeah. back yeah. up again. I think we need to be there. Well, that case, and that's the school. As well, the the it is this. I agree. The school district is bigger than the city. The, and and so it, it's really the taxpayers of the white of, of the school district that are getting the benefit, and not all of them lives inside the city limits of public structure. But they're also being taxed in the school district, providing money to the school, which is then going. There. So if the school did it, is school if the school hired you at five percent and the school levy at the level that they would to make all the payments then that's where it should be it's the and the, the school resource officer is 100 percent belonging to the school now the resource officer is going to belong 100 percent to the county which is fine but i don't see then why the city of columbus junction has to pay more but this the school cannot legally have a school resource officer under them they have no powers. They have no powers to hire a, a law enforcement officer. So it has to come from the city or it has to come from the county. And the school has only powers to hire a security officer at most. Well, the, well if we want to, the school pay, again, 95% of it, we'll pay five. And, and we're good. This, this is something. For everybody to discuss, I, I am actually the middleman. <laughs> I, I, if, if, I thought I am right now. <laughs> this is, this is, this is this, yeah, some of the services, how I really get I, I, you guys I, can change it. I'm not taking any time. offense to anything. I understand everybody's. I'm just Would trying to. Mayor? Would you sign up for that? As you a got, mayor, you, I did. You've got a full police force yeah. today. As a mayor, I did that. You're paying 100 percent of. I did. And you're going to hire another person and and give them and give them to the county. Why? Well, why but, is the but we had a we had a police force. Donnie could hire that person. The city pays for half. The school pays for half. Donnie's in charge of him. It's a done deal. The county's not even involved. We could be then the city of Wampanoag turns around and they get rid of their police. But that was not. That was something completely different. So two let's, years let's, after let's the let's fact. Let's talk about that, though. okay? So, home construction and the city of Wapolo. Same reason. The reasons that we merged, though one of the main ones, was staffing issues, right? So we sent out 
40 was set out for applications to hire an officer to replace them for everybody. With 33 apps that were that were sent out and people that put in interest. Of those, they had 13 of the applications back. Of the three of them showed up to the testing date of that one passed the physical and no one can pass the written test. And this is an ongoing, an ongoing thing. I think you're going to see because of the money issue, the same as Wapolo, that you can't pay what the larger entity of the county can as far as or as far as wages, especially with the, our or increase, if we're getting the same. It, if the decision to that to that decision, the decision was a fine financial. The decision was finding people. Right. It, it, again, I come back to Angler. No different. The, the two organizations are set up differently. You can get volunteers here. We can't get volunteers there. We've got a police department. We get along fine. We we when we need to hire somebody, we've been able to hire them. We're happy with what we've got. You know, I, I don't know why down here you had to have. 40 applications. Yes. We haven't had that issue when we put out for a police officer. I don't know why, but we haven't had to go through that. Well, then, you know, I know, to be honest with you, usually what happens is our police officers end up accounted. So, George. Um, but yeah, you can, um, I, you guys can break this apart however you want. Yeah. However you want. Yeah. Well, well, what if we split the 25%? Pardon me? Well, the county and the city split the 25%. It's a start. I mean, we're I, we're all throwing darts at the board right yeah, now. Uh, In another year or year and a half, we would have better and expenses to figure it out. I think I still would rather just write a check than a percentage. We can, well, we can certainly come up with another. But Chris, are you talking about this stuff, like the half of the 25 grand? Yes. So that's yeah. So, yeah. Or okay. 10 or 15. So, like when we when we first yeah. met and we talked about what it was going to cost, yeah. you know, 100 to 110,000 yeah. dollars. I mean, so, you know, we were comfortable about throwing in, you know, more than half of that is what I was told. So, I mean, I think that's where we're at right now. <laughs> That like but fifteen percent or fifteen thousand each is what it's looking. And there are, you know, why it's and I wrote, I wrote it for seven years. Yes. I wrote a seven year contract to protect our employees from being terminated. I mean, that's what it comes down to with why it's seven years. Now we're gonna see increases every single year in law enforcement services. So I go back to that percentage wise, and I don't know what your attorney said, but I still think the percentage wise. Is what it should be. That's what the other contracts are. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really about the percentages that way. It was more like, well, that's that's fine. The county can pay for it. They just send this check and then uh, just follow through. It doesn't uh, matter. That's what uh, I'm saying is, if you set if you set one amount for seven years, the other two entities are are not fairly being uh, in contract. But they don't agree with you. Haven't already. Right? Like yeah, up you know yeah up to you, but that those numbers increase. Well, what's the county kicking in at Illinois? So I, I, we, 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 twenty percent of them. Again, I don't understand what's the difference between L and M and us. Because L and M still has their own law enforcement, and that's where I'm. But but L and M is made up of Lex, Grandview, and Muscatine, and Prudhoe. Yeah, Muscat needs a big share of it. Yeah, and, which that's the majority of the county. county. So, so why haven't you gone to those communities? Well, because you already supply police service. Yeah, they pay, so you they, they pay That's the same service. thing we got going. We already supply police services to the city of Columbus Junction. So why should we take in a percentage? You know, this is the first day I've heard about this whole conversation. So I'm with you. So I know you're wanting answers. No, I, why, I, I, why? We is, want why aren't you guys trying to protect the service if it's coming from the PD? That's why I'm kind of questioning. Maybe it's something between school and, and you guys need to work on this, and we need to stay out of it for right so, now until so you guys come up with that. Yeah, I'm just learning about this today. Yeah. Should in my, should, in my opinion, yeah. um, with what Wise County's got going right now with, with both other schools, 
and I think they're doing a great job. And that's all the feedback we get. I think all three officers need to be housed under the same house, going doing the same. And I think Brandon does too, and I think that's why you do. Yeah, you know, kind of get mixed that you think it ought to be just handled by a show. No, I'm saying we will write a check. I will do that, man. Thank and we'll you. sign up for a certain amount Thank you, brother. Bye. all the way along because I don't want my city council wanting a copy of the budget from the sheriff's office to see whether you gave a 3% raise, a 5% raise, or bought a Dodge or a Ford or a Chevy. You're inviting us into an area that we shouldn't be in. And if we stay out of it and we write you a check, again, it goes in the bucket. Whatever you spend it on, it's no different than the way we handle our library. We look at the library budget, but then we decide what the city's going to pay. And it's up to the board on the library and their deals as to what they're going to do. Otherwise, we're in the middle of what book can you order? What can't you order? You know. All that kind of stuff. I want to stay out of their thing. Let let them do their thing. We will write a check. Yeah, and that's what we do at the libraries. We just write a check. And we don't ask anything Correct. from them. And that and that's what that's where this should go, in my opinion. And and more than happy to. And I understand the gray area, and I I, I get it. I'm just listening, sorting all this, yeah. and listen to both sides because we're not here to make a decision today. Nope. We're here to get it out. I just think more conversation needs between Brandon and the sheriff's office and the city. And well, then bring it back to us with what you guys come up with, because we're not here to separate, make decisions or say, well, well it, you're not going to do it. So what you are actually saying, that is in the contract. So it's primarily just a payment and we just take care of everything. Yeah, but as we don't finish, I want to fly them out. I want to fly them out. Because the percentage... The amount of our check changes then every time you buy a new vehicle, every time you give a guy a raise, every time his insurance goes up, every time it, it, we'll write you a check. And you take care of what that's. That, that, you don't need us in the middle of it, in my opinion. And yeah, the, the school and Donnie have been talking and Donnie had, had said that this was going to go go on and he wondered if if we would contribute to it and yeah we tossed around numbers whether it's ten thousand or fifteen thousand or whatever and i said council approval but yeah i'm going to guess we do that you know and then and then a couple of weeks ago i get the get the 2080 agreement and all of a sudden now it's switched to 20 to 25 or from to 20 percent and you know we're going to get cars and we're going to get you know all the equipment, which I understand, you all got to have all that. But I don't think we should be in the middle of it. Let us write you a check, like we said we would. We're back at the beginning of this. So, from a budget standpoint, knowing what that check would have to be written for each year is easier to calculate. I understand that, but it's not that big a deal. I understand, but can the contract be written that that amount goes up? Five percent each year Maybe. to help fo follow some of these costs. That so it's not a fixed. Okay, it's ten grand every year for the next seven years because we both know the end of seven years that isn't nearly as. Yeah, you know, there could be something in the contract that, that, that there's an escalation clause in it of some kind, and whether I, I'm not real big on well, it needs to go up two percent. Well, I don't know what that number is either. You know, I don't know exactly how you. You know that would be something that you have to figure out, but at least at least we're not in the middle of cars and employees and because you, you're you're pulling us in, you're giving us an opportunity to go line item by line item, just like you're going to want to do on the ambulance, line item by line item, and I don't want in. Let me ask this question: What's your your current budget right now, maybe this is something, what if uh, Donnie would come work for the county and then we would open that conversation up. Uh, Where are you headed with this? Well, I'm just saying, he, he's gonna, one of these days, you guys are gonna make that decision. I'm just saying, 
maybe this is a time. I don't know. I just I'm bringing it up. I'm just talking. Oh, about you mean like a mode, dissolve the police merger, department and then put the county into it like we did with the agreement with the the city of Guapalo and and I'm just I'm just throwing this out there because it sounds like you know I don't know if your budget's still over 420, but I know uh, by having more people, I think the 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 community would benefit. Nothing against you, but just more force over there. I know we back each other up. I'm just bringing this up. That way, this cool thing. In this particular case, and again, I don't have a problem with it. In fact, I think it's very a very good idea. I, I really do. I'm not trying to blow the thing up. This officer is 100% inside the school. It, yeah, having his car parked out in the parking lot with the sheriff on it, you know, I told Sean, I'll, I'll go buy a panel and put sheriff on this park. You know, if that's what it wanted. Or we put up a sign, sheriff parking over. Uh, God, that just got in the paper. You know that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We're getting there. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here you know, I wish we had a police officer on every street corner. It, it's so much more than visibility, though. Mark. Well, I, and I understand that, I, and I know I'm simplifying it. I'm still going back to get us out of the argument. Uh, Brandon, I don't, that's right. Yeah, percentage, percent. percentage. I think we can come up with a number, whether it's percentage or number, and then we can put a clause in that. Can escalate every go year. for it. I, 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 this was just a first draft. I think it's the sticking point. If that's the sticking, point, the sticking, point, the sticking point, point, I think we can come. We it, 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 we can come we it, whether it's percentage, it all comes out yeah. in dollars. I Correct. think we can work that out. Correct. I how, really how do, you, how do you fund the thing? And, and you want the fewest people in the middle of it as you can get. You, so let's make sure we can come up with a number. Yeah. You may not like the number, but and then to be honest school. with you, I would encourage you with Ellen School to go to Let's Grandview and Fruitland and ask you to write a check because that's what you're asking us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm mixed on that, but yeah, I, uh, I hear you. Well, I'm not mixed on it. I mean, that, that, I know you're not. I, well, <laughs> I have it, it, so happens, so. it just so yeah. happens that those, those, those towns use the sheriff's office, so you're, you're picking on yourself. But they're also paying. Yes, they are. That's they're paying eleven thousand five hundred eighteen per county. Uh, Morningside's paying twenty five thousand six twenty two. Oakville's paying five thousand four hundred eight. Fredonia's paying seventy five hundred. Grandview's paying seventeen thousand six. So it's almost at a certain point. I wish Adam was here, but double taxation on the same it is thing, and which would be illegal. And we have illegal. that, and that's what we're charging these communities for that. So it's. And, and you the, see where I'm going with this. That's, and, they are paying for a service. And we are. And we're glad to get too. cheaper coverage to Fredonia. Because that used to be our. It's all population. <laughs> this is how it's based. It's, it's, I'm glad that, that you took Fredonia. Uh, yeah. And that's how it's based on. So that's the numbers on. So the one that's getting the deal here is Fredonia. Yeah. Fredonia Muscatine. Yeah. True. But you can find that overlap in every county. With LNM, that's a unique situation. They're all, all the contracts are completely different. All three. Well, you need, they, you need well, to they're all different. Well, well, and even even Wapolo, you know, and I don't know any of the detail on, on the Wapolo one, but you know, it kind of got backed into the county. It, it, it really it started it's out on, as a grant. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a grant, but it's still a grant. Yeah, but, it was, still a grant. but it was between yeah. the city and the school, right? And and then then when the police department went to the county. I assume the grant, the grants and the contract went to them. So there wasn't any discussion and back back in and to be honest with you, as far as I know, you you're doing the city of Waco is doing the same thing. They're writing a check to the sheriff's office. The grant money's going to all the city of Waco, right? And, and then it's right, it gets check. written back. Yeah. And, and what I'm saying is the city of Plymouth Junction is more than happy to write just the sheriff's office the check. Figured. We'll figure out what we that just got to We'll get that figured out. What we're down to is the amount. One question: the amount that how much should the city fund the junction contribute? Right. That's that's just like I guess the overall question of all this discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Less. Well, yeah. When, when I read this, I was surprised that our sheriff was reviewing the officer every year and and the, and the percentages. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I to be honest with you, I think. 
if we go back to write a check, all we need is an agreement. We don't need a 2080 agreement. We have no that takes us out of any liability of any of the anything ever happens. It doesn't affect any of our insurances. Not all we're doing is contributing to the to the project. Paying for a service. Well, actually it's donation is what it is. We're not paying for anything. We're just donating. So well, these contracts do take the liability completely away from the Columbus Junction Police Department and the city and actually the school. But it doesn't take it. But but if somebody wants to sue you, they're going to sue everybody anyway. When they ever have the agreement, so oh, they go after the liability insurance with the highest amount. Yeah. You bet you. So, <laughs> and again, I I want to com- I, I want to compliment the sheriff's office, you guys, and the school in putting this thing together. We <laughs> we want to help, but I just don't think. That we should be at a percentage because I don't think that puts us in a position where we have, in my opinion, the right to review all this stuff. And I don't want to. Let's work that out. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. So, like I said, uh, I just started, we'll this work is... it together, we'll present it, and then we'll figure it out. And do we want to, how do we want to do that? <laughs> like, you, you want us to get together, or maybe one of you guys be part of that? I've been down this path out. several times with Brandon. And I've been in the shoes of where Mark's been, so I don't want to volunteer, but I think it makes well, you should do it. a lot of sense. And you've yeah. already been involved in this. Yeah. You've yeah. so been down this road. I kind of understand what I just want it to, to be fair, and I guess that's kind of why I wrote it this way, just in case. And, and that's fine. Money. It, it, it got to $110,000, or it could be $80,000. It's just, and then that wouldn't be totally fair to Columbus Junction. That, you know? that, that's fine. If you can wheel that sucker down to eighty thousand dollars, and we're still kicking in ten or whatever the number, you know, if, wonderful. If you're fine with that, then that's that, wonderful. That's it, what it's it so be. happy. Is, is, that, is there? Do we need to kind of know where the city? I mean, you kind of shared a little bit about where you think maybe that range would be, right? We we would go ten to fifteen. More than happy. More than happy to. Uh, I gotta get by my council, but. Yeah, I'd be more than happy. To we we kind of talk that. about that when we get that. Should we kind of go over that? I'm going to check the county and say. But if it's I'm going to ask Brandon. We're, we're going to calculate the high side. We're going to cal- calculate the low side, and then we're going to evaluate it all in between and see where we're at. Yeah, because what we'll look at, what we're going to look at, likely is how big is the check? Where is it coming from? Right, and how, and how do we calculate? I yeah. wish I could hire somebody and give you all those numbers, but I well, can't until it's I know. agreed upon. It's, we're, we're working on it. So, and that's why I don't want in it. Well, no, I don't. I, I don't want you to hire somebody at 110, but I'll take somebody at 75. I don't want you. I don't want that car to be fine. I want it to be get low. I don't want in it. We uh, the, the, one more discussion out in here in the last we we can figure that part out. What he's talking about, we can come in and clean up. Sure. Yeah. But we're still down to startup costs. So getting things that we do not have. Due to us adding a new position, are you still okay with the initial startup costs? Uh, I want to write you a check. Yeah, you guys need to sit down and the same yeah, factor exactly. on this. We'll figure it out. I I, I, I want to write you a check. If we, if, you know, I don't know what you want to do. If we got two checks first year and one check thereafter, I I haven't thought that far. We'll try to give you a couple of different scenarios. Yeah, yeah. we're good. We're well and we're ready. I'll, okay. I'll work hard to make it successful. Get the right person in there. Just get yeah. everybody. Yeah. Again, I'm the middle person. I'm the, but everybody <laughs> has to come to agreement, and I'll I'll be the hired. We'll make we'll make we'll, sure they're well trained. We'll do everything we can on yeah. our side. We want we'll get the it. kids in Columbus Junction protected. We're gonna get it. absolutely. And Brandon, you're really welcome to work with Donnie. Donnie contacts me all the time. I'm not there every day. That's no different than Sean. I'm not there. Yeah. And so uh, you can work with him if you want me. I'll make every attempt I can to be in the city hall whenever you want. And I, I again, I, I assume you're going to include the school with the. the yeah, I mean, so we, can, we can go right. Oh, you're in the list. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're the 70%. You guys want to set up a time now? Yeah, what time can, yeah, start this conversation? Can it be this week? Right after this, people have time. I sure. I can share a couple more. Things that were about yeah. the startup costs, if I had some questions on that. We can meet at our office and do it right after this meeting. If, if everybody's okay with it, we'll do it right after. Sure. 
You we, got, you we, do, we got free water out there. You need to take care of that too, me, because again, I'm I don't care what kind of car it is. I don't care that. I want to know what our check's going to be. Okay. Well, with that, I think we that covers all the topics on our agenda. We can do it, guys. No Motion work. to adjourn. Second. It'll work. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You set a record for a length of meeting. No, no, we've had them later now. We'll have them here next week. We'll be here. We'll be here.